Okay, uh, let's get started. We're here for the uh, Jeopardy audition webinar. The audition process and how to prepare for your audition. Um, I want to thank everybody for attending. My name is Randy Gold and I have Stephanie Yoss co-hosting with me. Stephanie, are you there? I sure am. Hi, Randy. Hi, Stephanie. Uh, well, we're going to have fun, right? We sure are. We all decided that. So, uh, what is this all about? Uh, we're here to discuss the Jeopardy audition process. You want to know what it's all about, and if you get an audition, how to prepare for it. It's a, it's a long process, and it's a process that can be uh, managed by uh, the potential contestants. So, we hope uh, you'll get a lot out of this, and... So, uh, you know, let's get started. Uh, we should be here about five minutes, give or take an hour. And let me start by introducing Stephanie. For those of you who may not know her, Stephanie was a seven-time Jeopardy! champion in season 29, which showed in 2012. Is that right? That's right. Yep. And then she was in the Tournament of Champions in 2013. Mm -hmm. But just recently was in the Battle of the Decades which brought together the best of the Jeopardy! champions all the way back to the beginning of the show. How many contestants were in that? Uh, four, 45. 15 45. From, each, from each uh decade. So Jeopardy! Uh, Jeopardy! So Stephanie <laughs> uh, is in a very rarefied company there. She really was a great champion. Did I say that she won seven times? She won seven <laughs> times. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, you know, why don't you start tell us a little bit about the Battle of the Decades? Uh, the Battle of the Decades was uh, an invite-only tournament, um, and they were really trying in their 30th season, I think, to bring back some of people's favorites. Uh, and they wanted to do something that would not only bring back sort of the best of the of the competitors, but allow the fans to take part. So that's why they did the fan favorites for each decade. Um, I had a pretty good sense. The producers had told me that I probably would be back, but I, I thought maybe I'd be up for the fan favorites. So it was pretty exciting when they called me and told me that I was in, and I, I said like three times to Karina. Does, am I in? Like, I'm in, in. Like, I don't have to fight for this. And she's like, no, you're in. So it was really exciting to be a part of that and to go. And we taped over, they each each decade taped um, different sessions. So I never got to meet any of the 80s folks because I lost them my first round game. Um, but I did get to meet a number of the 90s folks because they taped the day before us. So it was uh, three first round tape dates. And then uh, the subsequent rounds were all, I think, done just recently in April. It was pretty close to when they aired. So I got to meet, you know, probably about 20 to 25 previous champions. And it was a really, really amazing experience. And I kept pinching myself that I was even in the same room with Ken Jennings, let alone, uh, you know, up one of 45 chance of winning a million dollars. I don't think I'll ever face those odds in my life ever again. Pretty exciting. Pretty cool. Pretty yeah. Well, I hope you do. I hope they do too. I hope you do. <laughs> maybe there'll be the uh, the battle of the centuries at some point. And well, maybe we'll I'm, see I'm you again. I'm for a ladies' night. You know. Tournament. Oh, okay. I go for that. Uh, just let me add real quick that Stephanie uh, actually has a life outside of Jeopardy as well, uh, and she's known in various circles as Dr. J. If you're uh, on the J board, which is I'll explain that again later, but that's a uh, uh, one of the major boards where Jeopardy fans congregate to talk about the show. Uh, and she's known there as Dr. J. Uh, you want to explain real quick where the name came from? Well, I have a PhD. I'm a fake doctor, but you know, I can't heal anybody. But I do have a PhD. And uh, when I was just starting out, I, I thought, well, you know, I didn't really want to go by Dr. Yas. It seemed very formal. And I was really trying to get myself a nickname, which never works, right? You can never sort of like, hey, here's my nickname that I've decided. So for years, I've been trying to get my students to call me Dr. J. And they don't even know who Julius Irving is and why that would be a thing I should be called. So once I decided to start to go on, you know, internet forums, I thought, well, that's just going to be my handle. If I have control over what I get called, finally, I'm going to be Dr. J. So that's the shorthand. Okay. Well, that explains that. I know who Dr. J is, and I if, hope. Uh, if, you, if you're a serious Jeopardy contender, you better know who Dr. J is. <laughs> and it's not me. <laughs> it's Julia Serving. <laughs> Julia Serving, yes. Okay, uh, let me just tell you real quick about myself. I was a contestant in season 25. And I did great on my show for about 22 minutes, but then unfortunately, Final Jeopardy came to pass. 
So I may not be able to show you how to win on Jeopardy, but I can certainly show you how to get on the show, or at least improve your odds of getting on the show. And that's what this is all about. That's why we're going to be discussing here. So with that, let us get started. Okay, what are the goals for the webinar? Uh, first, an overview of the audition process, just kind of what it's all about. Uh, two, preparing for your audition. Uh, that should be an ultimate goal here, is to learning a lot of things that you can be doing to improve your odds uh, of getting on the show, because you got to do well at the audition. And part three goal is what we'll call a roadmap. Uh, Basically, uh, you should set a goal for yourself as to what you are going to be doing in order to improve uh, what you are. You'll be able to do your best at your audition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to look at basically eight chapters here. Uh, first step is the road to Jeopardy. Um, number two is getting the audition, what you have to do to actually get to an audition. Step three, the audition day. Step four, well, how do you ace your audition? How do you do the best that you can do? Step five, question, can I really prepare for my audition? We say yes. Step six, what happens after my audition? And then step seven, uh, we're going to take some questions that have been sent in in advance. Uh, let me note here that if you are uh, watching us online, there is a link on the left side of your screen, which says ask a question, and there should be a box in the lower left-hand part of the screen. If you have a question that comes up uh, as the webinar is proceeding, uh, just type it in and send it on to us, and time permitting, we will uh, get to it at the end. And step eight, the next steps. What do you do uh, once you've, uh, you know, trying to figure out what you do in order to get to the audition? So let's go on chapter one. The Road to Jeopardy, personal stories. Uh, Stephanie, you want to just do a real quick rundown of what the process was as to how you actually got on the show. Sure. Uh, I took the online test for the first time, I think, in 2011 or 10, 10, and uh, did poorly. Just, you know, I didn't even want to take it. It was my husband's idea. He kept saying, you need to do this. And I was like, all right, it'll shut him up if I take it. So I took it, and I did not do well. And I thought, I, I mean, I sort of literally, like, clapped my hands together and brushed them and said, that's the end of that. Not doing that anymore. And the next year, they had that they had that glitch with the, the, the tests that were happening in January, and they had to offer them again in March. And so my husband said, no, you're doing it again. I said, okay. So I did it again, and this time I aced it. I just knew, you know, I had gotten a lot of them right. And so uh, that set the ball in motion. That was March of 2012. I got the call. I got the email about an audition in April. Uh, my audition date was May 1st in Toledo, so I went there and did the audition and um, killed it. Just killed it. Knew I killed it. Uh, but that didn't mean anything in terms of I knew that it was it could be quite a long time between your audition date and when they actually call you. So I really tried to settle in for like, oh, they could, it could be any time. Uh, but I got a call about six weeks later, and they so they said in late June, can you come and be on in July? <laughs> I said, uh, okay, yeah, of course. It didn't occur to me you could say no to Jeopardy. So I said, sure, sure, I'll cram for six weeks. So that's what happened. So from March of 2002 or 2012 to I taped on August 1st of 2012, and my air dates were October of 2012. Great, great. Okay, let me uh, just add one thing uh, for those of you who may not be aware of it. Uh, the Basically, the only way that you can get to an audition now is to start by taking the online test, which is given in the adult test is given in January, generally, sometimes February, but it's I think they're pretty much settled on January now. And uh, once you take it, uh, you're just kind of waiting to find out whether they're going to call you for an audition. Uh, you don't really know how well you did. Uh, you don't actually get a score. You might be able to figure it out, but you don't actually get a score. Uh, and you just have to hang in there and wait to see if you get the uh, that email that says, hey, we want you for an audition. Uh, my uh, story is a little bit different than Stephanie's. I tried to get on the show three times. So for those of you who are thinking, oh my goodness, 
if I don't get on that first time, if I'm lucky enough to get that first audition, and if I don't ace it, I'm out of luck. Well, the answer is no, you're not. There are lots of people who get on the show after uh, multiple auditions. Uh, I blew. I know that uh, early in the 2000s, 2001 and 2003, I had auditions. I, I live in Los Angeles, so I had auditions uh, locally. And I knew coming out that I just wasn't going to get called. And, of course, I wasn't called. Then uh, around 2007, I took the online test again. I figured, why not? And <coughs> I got um, the email that said, come down for the audition. So uh, that's kind of where where it is. Uh, the road. To, well, what else happened subsequent to that is uh, I got ultimately I got the call. It said we want you to be on the show, but we want you to be an alternate, which means that you come down to the studio, and if for some reason uh, somebody can't go on, then I'm the one that goes on. It doesn't happen all that often, but they always have alternates in the studio, and it turned out that I uh, got down there, and I was able to watch everything, uh, all the tapings, uh, a whole day, but I didn't get on the show. So I said, well, what does this mean? And, and they basically said, well, you know, we, we, we really want you for the show, so you probably will hear from us uh, later. And the answer is, uh, I did. About some weeks later, I got a call uh, that said, we want you to be on the show for real. So uh, that's kind of my story. And let's uh, move on. <coughs> getting an audition. Well, actually, I did start to talk about this. Um, mm -hmm. You got the qualifying test and getting the call. Uh, is there anything that you may want to add to that, Stephanie? Um, well, again, I just... We've all know, we all sort of probably know the stories about we, nobody knows how much you, how well you have to do on the test uh, to get a call or to even get an to get an audition. That's before you get. Um, and so all you can do is keep taking it. And and the audition that I was at, uh, Maggie Speak, who's the head contestant coordinator, she's a full producer now, um, has just kept emphasizing how many people have done it multiple times and to to be persistent. To just don't don't let you know one failure or two failure or even like she name checked I think it was Jay Reed who was like who took his ninth audition before he got on the show and then he did really well so you know she was like just keep doing it you never know so that's what I would say yeah exactly exactly uh, you know there are probably are countless examples of people who have taken the te uh, who have taken the test. Mm -hmm. perhaps a dozen times or more sure. and maybe got to two, three, four auditions uh, and then eventually got on the show because they got to that final audition and they just clicked yeah. with the coordinators and they got that call. So when I say getting the call for the audition, uh, it's really not a call. It's really you get an email. So if you uh, signed up to take the online test and that's certainly something that I'd recommend everybody uh, does uh, if you're not uh, if you're not signed up with jeopardy.com I would recommend you do that uh, immediately uh, they don't overwhelm you with email you might get maybe like one a month mm -hmm. just the kind of right is that right yes yeah, that's right yeah yeah they kind of tell you when events are coming up they they don't try to sell you anything or you know or, or spam you or whatever. They just tell you what when things are coming up. So you really want to be on their list so that you get the notice uh, that uh, the online test is coming up. So the you you know to register for that. So you have to be registered, I guess, with uh, you know at least uh, maybe the day before. So but they give you several week notice uh, when the test is coming up. So uh, that's probably the first thing to do if you if you're not uh, signed up with Jeopardy. dot com, uh, then do that. And uh, so let's go on. Okay, the day of the audition. So let's say that you got that email that said we want you to come down for an audition. Typically, the audition will be a few weeks out. Do you mm -hmm. recall, Stephanie, how long it was? Yeah, I again, I, I think it was about four four to six weeks between the time of the email to the scheduled audition. Right. And 
how long after see this this is this is a big question everybody has because people that take the test yeah. they want to know well god if i don't hear from them within the first few weeks or the first few months does that mean that i'm out of luck well, and I, I think the, that's one thing where JBoard is useful. JBoard is useful for a lot of things. But that's where people sort of will report in about if they have gotten emails from particular sites. So I got invited to the Toronto one or I got invited to the Buffalo one. Then people sort of know, okay, those emails are going out. And if I haven't got one, maybe it's a pretty good sign that I'm not getting the invite. It, but it might not be conclusively, but at least you start to know, okay, they have sent out you know those those things to those people. So you you do you just sort of it helps to check in on that particular thread. Right, right. Uh, because these emails do go out on a on a rolling basis. I mean, they it's do. basically it, is it. I, I I audition in Los Angeles again. I mentioned that before, but but mm -hmm. Stephanie auditioned in one of the cities around the country, or um, mm -hmm. that that they the the coordinators go out. Uh, do they go out to uh, an audition city more than once, or is it just that one time? No, it's it. Oh, like not in a year. No, in a year, I think they really only do. Like this year, they're actually they came to Detroit twice, but once was because they are tar they targeted specifically um, an African American women's you know demo. Like they were there was some sort of a trade fair, and they really wanted to go after that demographic, so they went to that. But they didn't advertise that um, in mm -hmm. a general call to the public. So they will come to Detroit twice, but in general, no, they would only go to you know New York once and Boston once and Omaha once a year. Yeah, and they will do that over the course of several months because it's yeah. basically the same set of uh, contested coordinators head up, headed up by That's Maggie right. Speak, yeah. who uh, is a just an amazing, amazing person. Uh, uh, it is my pleasure to have met her, and mm -hmm. I'm sure Stephanie will agree, and I hopefully everybody who's listening in mm -hmm. will someday get to an audition and get to, to meet Maggie. Uh, she's, uh, the, uh, she's a producer on the show now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just got a notice a few days ago that she's been with the Jeopardy Productions for 19 years now. So she's worked her way up. But for several years now, she's been the head of the contestant coordinators. And she goes with her staff. Uh, Stephanie mentioned Karina before. She's another one on the staff. And there's Glenn and Robert. Robert. And Am I missing anybody? Well, I know they just hired a contestant from this season. So there's, there's oh. a contestant coordinator. Yeah. But I can't okay. remember what her name is. So, so stay tuned for, for her. <laughs> yes. Okay. Very yeah. good. We will stay tuned. Uh, Stephanie mentioned one other thing uh, along the way there. She mentioned JBoard. I mentioned it also. This is something, uh, uh, part two. I mentioned before that if you're not signed up at Jeopardy.com to get the uh, notices from the Jeopardy productions, the second thing you should be doing is signing up at JBoard, yeah. uh, which is the user. It's a user-run forum, which is, as far as I know, uh, it's the best one out there. I mean, yeah. I've been yep. on, I've been there for years. Stephanie is there all the time. Uh, lots of people who you've seen on the show yep. are there, right? Arthur Chu? Yep. on there, yep. and Ken shows up now and then, and Roger yep. Craig shows up now and then, yep. and you're going to be, you know, be able to talk to uh, yep. not just champions, but people who yeah. uh, have been on the show, like mm -hmm. myself, uh, mm -hmm. just lots and lots of people, and basically probably lots more people who want to be on the show. That's right. So this is where you go to to really uh, talk to the Jeopardy community and really find out what's going on. Like Stephanie mentioned, people will tell you when the auditions are coming up for a particular city because there's, I don't know, maybe about a dozen yep. cities yeah, yep. around the country. And they, set a, they don't really set up a fixed schedule, so you don't really know when they're going to be happening. But it's over several months after mm -hmm. the test. Right. I think the first uh, set of auditions were starting in April this year. Yeah. I don't remember where, but they're going on now. I've seen on JBoard yeah. that people said that Philadelphia is coming up at the end of June. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's what I saw. Mm -hmm. And some other cities. So uh, when you do sign up for the online test, they ask you where you want to take the test or where you want to take the audition, assuming you get an audition. So, um, uh, so that's, again, part of signing up for the online test. I, as I said, I had my audition in Los Angeles, which as far as I know, because this is why I asked Stephanie whether they go out to cities multiple times, because as far as I know, and I think I've seen this happen, in Los Angeles, they have auditions going on on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't necessarily have to say you want to audition in Los Angeles, but uh, there's a lot of local people here. Uh, basically, yeah. I think when you when you sign up for the test, if you're local, you don't really have to say where you want to go. Right. 
Right. Uh, they just assume you're going to be in Los Angeles, and they do have auditions going on on a, a rolling basis. And uh, there's another reason, which I'll get to uh, in a little bit, why they have additional auditions for people in Los Angeles. They're not sure. necessarily going to uh, saying that people in Los Angeles are better, yeah. and we want more of them. Absolutely not. Uh, but uh, there are other reasons yeah. for that. So, uh, oh, J-Board. I, keep, I mentioned it, uh, J-B-O-A-R-D dot T-V. Yeah, that's the okay, for don't, for, don't forget, it's jboard.tv. So uh, sign up for that, and you'll learn about all sorts of other great things like the uh, Jeopardy archive, which is yeah. an archive of pretty much all the shows that have aired in the Trebek era. Mm-hmm, that's right. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that is a great resource to know. And, uh, in fact, there are people on Jboard who maintain, on a volunteer basis, who maintain the J uh, archive, mm-hmm. the Jeopardy archive. Yep. So you really, uh, it's really important, I, I'm saying, it's absolutely. Sign up with Jeopardy.com and go to jboard.tv and you will be able to mingle with people who really know what's going on with the show. Yep. Uh, from the online test, through the auditions, through watching the show. There's a discussion, there's a, there's a, a thread every day where people discuss what went on in that day's uh, show. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, okay, so what else? Audition day, let's get back to that. Um, Stephanie, uh, why don't you just kind of address, I've got five bullets there, what to expect, the venue, the test, the interview, and the mock game. What actually happens at an audition? Sure. The venue, at least for me, and I think this is pretty standard, is a a hotel, the hotel ballroom. So, you know, if you've ever been to a wedding reception, you know what to expect. Uh, And it is remarkably low rent. They they don't expect you'll be shocked that they have, like, no budget. Like, the sign that'll say Jeopardy is clearly from, like, the earliest days of the show. Um, It's just very, you know, they give you a pen that will break halfway through. Like, just don't expect to be impressed with um, the kind of quality that they bring to, to setting up the audition. Uh, so you need to be, you know, mock, m- mask your disappointment. Uh, but yeah, they'll be in a hotel ballroom, and uh, and and you know, you'll you'll figure out who's gathering. And I had like a crosser puzzle so that I had something to do uh, that would make me look smart and important. And and while I was waiting, but they will ask to take a, a photograph, a Polaroid picture of you. And now they're actually videotaping a lot of this uh, for a variety of reasons. I've been told. So expect that you will be, you know, photographed and videotaped. And that's good because if you make it on the show, you're going to be videotaped. So um, they start with, you'll all be, if there might be two groups. I think I, there were two groups. I never met the later group, but I was in a group of about 30. And uh, you get herded into the ballroom. You pick a seat where you want to go, and they give you a written test, 50 questions. Get a pencil. Uh, I think they put the questions up on a projector, like, you know, and again, cheap projector, like a sheet. I mean, it's crazy. And so, you know, they're doing one at a time, and you you, you can write down your answers, and, and you can go back. So if, you, so if you sort of have an idea of one, but you don't you haven't figured it out yet, you can write something in your slot and then go back to it and take your time. So 50-question test written. And much easier, it seems, than anecdotally, than the online test. And it's the sort of consensus informally about people that people think why they do that. It's just to make sure somebody else didn't take the online test for you, that you're really you. So you take that test, and then they, um, they grade it. So some of them go out of the room. The other contestant coordinators go out of the room and grade it while you can mill about, and then Maggie starts to just talk to you about the show. And honestly, she's talking about the show as if people have never watched it before. She's like, some of you may not even be familiar with the show. And you're thinking, really? But okay. So she spends time talking about the show itself and what they're looking for and sort of, you know, just gives you a primer on here's what the show is about, and therefore here's what we're looking for. So she spends some time just talking while they grade the test. Then when they come back with the tests graded and they don't have to kick anybody out, which would be embarrassing if it didn't happen at ours, um, then they pull out groups of three and they pull you in front. They make you stand up and and, and uh, get in front of three producers and they hand you a, a buzzer. And it's not the same buzzer as the real game, but don't worry about that. Um, but they hand you a buzzer and you're st- each of you is standing in front of a, a producer and they project, you know, an actual kind of game board onto, you know, this sheet and you start playing a mock game for them. And so you play a little bit of 
the mock game, not a whole lot, but enough for them to see whether you can actually play and whether your buzzer finger works. And uh, and after that, then they tell you to put your buzzers down, and you still stand there in front of everyone. Now, your backs are to everybody in the room. You know, the, the producers are facing the people in the room. You're standing in front of them, so your backs are to everyone in the room, and you're facing the producers. And uh, they will use the sheets that you have filled out for the audition about, you know, questions. You know, so what's your most interesting story, blah, 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 all that stuff. You will have filled out like 10 pages of paperwork just coming to the audition. So they will call things from that and say, so, you know, you told you, you tell us you know how to, you know, paddle kayaks backwards. Tell us about that. So they'll pick which questions they want to ask you, and they will interview you from anywhere to two to ten minutes, depending on whether they think they got something or they don't. So they will interview you. And everybody takes their turn. So when they're done with their three, then they pull up another three, and it, you know, if you're done with yours, you're done with yours, which doesn't mean you're necessarily done with the audition because this is still a performance and you're still on display. So I would tell you you're not completely done yet, but you're done with the hard part. Uh, and so they get through everybody that way, and I think maybe they ask if there's questions or not questions, and then they tell you the stuff about, well, everybody's in the pool, and we may or may not call you, but don't call us, and they sort of tell you what the procedure is, such as it is, and then they, you know, dismiss you on your merry way. And it, I don't know, maybe took an hour, an hour and a half, maybe two, to get through everybody in the group. Seems like that. I don't know. I had a great time. I, I wasn't keeping track of time. I will just interrupt here. Uh I was in a group of about 50 people at, at a Los Angeles audition, and they went up threes at a time, and I was in the last group. So I know everybody's thinking, is there an advantage to being in the first group or the last group or somewhere in the middle? And the answer is, uh, I don't know. But the fact is, lots of people get on, like me. I was in the last group. I mean, I'm telling you, we were there for several hours. Yeah. And it was kind of hard to be sitting there watching all these people going up in front of me and thinking, wow, that guy really aced that interview. And mm -hmm. this woman, she really aced it, and mm -hmm. I'm going to be on the show. And you look around and you say there are 50 people, and maybe five of them will get on the show. Yeah. But, you know, you know, again, this, you don't know. The thing is where we're ultimately going here is you just have to do the best that That's you right. can. Yeah, the guy that I came out thinking would probably be on the show, I've never seen him again. So... He didn't make it on the show, and at least one person, there's two people who were in my audition group who, who have since made it on the show, one of whom I played against, and I was frankly shocked that she got chosen. So, you know, I can't tell you exactly what they're looking for, and you shouldn't be trying to change yourself to what they're looking for, because you'll never know what they're looking for. You just have to be your best self. And, exactly. hope that's what, and hope what that's what they're looking for. Convince yeah. them that's what they're looking for. And, and this will come up several times uh, over the next half hour. Have fun. Absolutely. Yeah. If nothing elaborate. else, you may never get on the show, but you've had that audition, and if you had fun, you had a fun experience, period. You had a great experience. I mean, I'll tell you. I mean, you know, it's disappointing if you don't get on the show, sure. just like you get on the show, sure. and it's disappointing that you didn't win. But the fact is, getting to that step is yeah. just amazing. I mean, this is Jeopardy. This is the yeah. elite game show out there. Right. So just the process is amazing. And to me, it actually took me close to two years between the time that I took that test that resulted in my getting on the show and actually getting on the show. It was actually turned out to be about a year and uh, eight months, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's a potentially long process. Sometimes it's a very quick process, but it's a long, uh, it could be a long process, but it's a really amazing process. I don't know anybody who has gone through that process that didn't just come out thinking that, wow, this is really great. Uh, let me uh, interject one other thing here before I think you'll uh, get onto the mock game is people wonder about the interview. What's the one question that frequently comes up? Mm -hmm. Stephanie? Oh, uh, the question that, that Maggie will ask you for sure? Yeah. What are you going to do with the money? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Do you remember what you said? I don't. Ha! I, I'm sure I said travel. Um, I didn't know at the time that, you know, maybe you were supposed to come up with some sort of sexy answer. Uh, so I think I was like, pay student loans and travel. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't remember what I said, but I'm sure that what I said was probably something very mundane as well. Right. But the fact is, we got on the show. So I think a point that Stephanie was making there is, you know, you just got to be yourself. You know, you don't want to be making up things. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll know it if you're, if you're trying to fake something, they will know it, and they will kind of cross you off right away. So you just got to be yourself. But there are things you can do to make yourself 
better to basically, let's say, improve your odds of getting on the show. Yeah. Because, you know, admittedly, the odds are low. Even if you get to the audition, the odds are still low, right? 100,000 people a year, over 100,000 people a year, That's take right. that online test. Mm -hmm. And how many actually get on the show during your year? About 400. Well, yeah, about 400. So, you know, you could work out the math. It's pretty low. Yes, that's right. But the fact is people want to get on and people take the test and people are hoping for that audition. And when they get to that audition, you know what? You treat it as seriously as you can, but you want to still have fun. So we're going to talk yeah. a little bit yeah. later about what are the things you can do to actually kind of bring yourself up to the standard that you should, you know, have. Right. So did you, uh, the mock game? Did you talk about that? I think yeah, maybe yeah. you did. Yeah, we, we play the mock game. I mean, it, they're, they're, I wouldn't say they're really hard questions. They're not softballs either, but, you know, it's meant to see how well you actually play. Um, and, and, I've, and I've heard through the grapevine that this is actually a fairly important part of the process. If, if you can't, you know, if you can't call a category loudly enough, if you can't, if you stumble over an answer or can never seem to get your phrasing right or just can't seem to manage the buzzer, they need to know that. So those are things you can be practicing when you play along at home, and you should be playing along at home if you're not doing that already, by the way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Uh, I have a stock answer when people, you know, say, what do I have to do to get on the show? Meaning, you know, how do I get through that audition? And uh, my stock answer is you have to be able to demonstrate that you are ready to step onto the Jeopardy stage. Yeah, that's right. They don't want they don't want people who are going to be learning along the way. Mm -hmm, that's you're right. not going to you're not going to get to the studio yep. and be fumbling with the buzzer. Camera ready. You have to be camera ready, and you know, and this this is you know so true for basically any kind of uh, let's call it an interview. It's what it really is. It's an that's interview right. for a job. That's it's a very right. specialized kind of job. You have <laughs> two, five, ten minutes to really yeah. show that you have what it takes to step onto the Jeopardy stage, you know, and we'll be talking more about well, what are they really looking for. Right. Um, you know, they're looking for you, but there's more to it than that. You know, yeah. exactly what they're looking for, you know, they never really admit that. But, right. you know, just anecdotally, you can kind of, you know, you can kind of see what they're looking for. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you ready? You know, are you really are ready? They don't have to teach you, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. anyway, so... Let's go on to the next step, labeled acing your audition. What are they actually looking for? And then we'll get into the do's and the don'ts. Mm -hmm. Well, you've already talked about this a little bit, but why don't you maybe like summarize and maybe you know bring up whatever else comes okay. to mind. Yeah, I, I, I sort of broke this down into categories. Um, and I think one, one is gameplay, right? They, they want to know that you actually can play the game and play the game effectively, which doesn't mean you're going to win the game. They just want to know that we're not going to have awkward pauses. We're not, you, know, you know how the game works, and you're going to move it along. Uh, I think they're looking for um, demeanor. I don't even think it's a particular demeanor. I don't think it's an extrovert versus an introvert. It's they just they they're, they're trying to put together an entertaining television program. So they want somebody that's just not going to be a flat line on TV, right? Even right. if you're even if you're annoying, like at least that elicits a response from people. Just ask Colby. Just ask Arthur Chu. You know they elicited responses from people, and they didn't have a particular demeanor that's all the same. Uh, I think they just want to think that you're someone people are going to want to see on their TV, either good or bad, and not just forget about you the next day. Uh, and then um, appearance, I think. They're looking for, again, somebody who's taking this seriously. I don't even think there's a uniform that you have to wear, but I think you ought to think about something, wearing something or, or looking you know, your best, something that makes you feel your best, whatever that is, and that's going to be different for different people. But it's, to me, it's about gameplay and demeanor, um, probably first and foremost. Yeah, I, I would I would add to you know how you want to dress is dress as you would on the show. Sure. Uh, you know it's it's very important, and this this applies to everything. Is you know if you're not a regular watcher of the show, watch the show. Yeah. Uh, if you happen to be in Los Angeles or you're going to be visiting, go to a show. Actually, go to a taping. I've been there a number of times, and you pick up a lot of things yeah. about the contestants just being there. Yeah. Uh, and that's what the contestant coordinators are doing. Uh, they're, you know, as Stephanie said, they're watching people's demeanor. I, I would, I would add uh, that you can be somewhat annoying, but I would say you probably don't want to be obnoxious. Yes, I would agree with that. Yeah, there's there's a line in there somewhere. You don't want to be obnoxious. And let me just, <laughs> I'll add this as well: is don't try to be cutesy. Yeah. Yeah, because you probably won't come across very well unless it's in your nature. Right. 
You know, if you're a if you if you're a joking kind of person and you find that uh, you can actually get people to react to your jokes and your comments and your witticisms, whatever. Then do it. Don't right. don't 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 hush yourself. Don't right. don't don't censor yourself. But right. if that's not really who you are, <laughs> right? Don't yeah. try to make jokes because if they fall flat, you're going to fall flat, and right. I think you're probably over at that point. That's right. So again, it comes back to just being who you are. Yeah. But but one thing, no matter who you are, I'll keep coming back to this. Have fun. Keep reminding yeah. yourself. Have fun. I've got a, a a piece of paper tacked to my bulletin board that says have fun. It's in my home office, and I'm looking at it right now because mm-hmm. I want to have fun doing this webinar. Yeah. I want to have fun in anything that I do. And you know what? It'll 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 carry over. Yeah. It will carry over. I will say a don't that that I saw in my in my audition was a guy who um, was a pretty strong personality, which I thought was going to be good for him. And I think he was a lawyer or his wife was a law student. And they asked him, he had put down on his sheet that that his wife had had taken classes from Elena Kagan. Uh, So it was his, like, connection, you know, that his wife had taken uh, classes from a, a now Supreme Court justice. And so they asked him about that. And he made it political. Huh. He made like a smart ass comment about Elena Kagan, and I thought, "What did you just do? Like, you have no idea what these people's political backgrounds are. What are mm-hmm. you thinking?" So, you know, that's a huge don't. All the stuff that you shouldn't and wouldn't do at a job interview, don't do here either. So, um, so yeah, I just thought right away, like, we're never going to see you on the show, and we have not. <laughs> we have not, and we wouldn't have. you be surprised? If I would someday. be shocked. I would be shocked, too. I have a great story that goes back to my audition in 2003. Uh, this was uh, in Los Angeles again, and there were about 50 people. This is before they had the online test. So the people that showed up for the audition, they took the written test, the one that really counted, right yeah, then yeah. and there. So there were about 50 people in the room, and they gave out the test, and then they went and they graded them, and they came back in, and they announced people who should stay mm-hmm. and thank everybody else for coming. Mm-hmm. You didn't pass. Yeah, you you know, you weren't, quote, unquote, good enough, you know, to get to the interview stage. But thanks for trying, and try again. You know, you may have missed it by one question. You don't really know. You know, so the thing is, you keep you keep doing it. But we got down, I think there were, it was, it was, uh, it was either three or six number of people. I think it may have been actually been only three of us. And one of the fellows there, we were talking before they started the uh, the interview, and he told me that he was, this was his 12th interview. Wow. Twelfth audition, not just trying out twelve times. I, I, he yeah. Let me to believe that this was the twelfth time they actually got to the interview stage. He probably was, you know, brilliant. He was able to ace those exams. Yeah. So he yeah. just kept calling every year and saying, "I want to come down." Because you can go down once a year mm-hmm. back in those days. You could just call him up and say, "I want to go down." You know, you could be living in Boston and you say, yeah. "I want, I want to come for an audition." Uh, they say, "Okay, can you be here on you know July twelfth?" And you say, "Okay, I'm going to do it." Uh, so you went to Los Angeles. So anyway, uh, where I'm getting here is. Morning, wow, 12 auditions. Yeah. What's going on with this? He was young, too. He probably yeah. wasn't any older than his early 30s. And I, I just looked at him, and I realized mm-hmm. it was very clear what it was. He was wearing a red blazer, Ooh. like like he was a realtor or, yeah. <laughs> you know, again, nothing against realtors. I don't think yeah. the coordinator said anything against realtors. But the fact is, you know, I wouldn't wear a red jacket right. to an audition. I mean, unless it was really, really you, but even then, uh, you know, conservative is better. No, you want to. It's, it's not. Make, let's make a deal. Do you want to? They want to be able to actually picture you right that moment on the set, how you're going to look, right? Yeah, you exactly. should make it easy for them to do that, where they can say, "I know exactly how this person is going to look in the middle podium, and it's going to be great. I can picture the game. We're going to do this." Yeah, that, that's a that's a key uh, uh, comment there. You want to make it easy for them to mm-hmm. pick you. That's right. uh, you know that goes for any kind of interview or any you know, sales call or anything. Yeah. You want to make it easy for the person you're dealing with to say yes, because mm-hmm. there's a thousand reasons why they can say no. That's right. But you want to make it easy for them to say yes. So um, yeah, so so you don't want to put up those flags, those red flags, like mm-hmm. red like a red blazer <laughs> that says you know what. I'm probably having fun, and I like being here, but you know what? Maybe I'm just not ready to step out on the stage just yet. So, you know, as Stephanie said before, there really isn't a particular outfit to wear. 
something you want to be comfortable with. Obviously, you don't want to go in jeans or right. you know, cutoffs or things like that. I, I consider myself very fortunate. I stepped into that audition room, and I was wearing a shirt that was, I'm telling you, was exactly the same color as the shirt that Maggie was wearing. And I, thought, <laughs> I thought, this has got to be good. Yeah. Because she's looking at me and saying, and it wasn't like a white shirt or a yeah, blue yeah. shirt. It was actually kind of a mint green kind of shirt, which is not, it was an unusual kind of color. But yeah, I mean, it looked good. But the fact that she was wearing something that was identical in color, I, I mentioned it. You know what? Play yeah. it up. Sure. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to bring things up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, as we said, they'll definitely, almost definitely going to ask you what are you going to do with the money. But what else are they going to ask? Um, it could be anything, you know, what you want to do on your, your, your sheet that you fill in mm-hmm. is to come up with things that are interesting about yourself, yeah. you know, and, and the fact is uh, you may not come up with anything or that you, that you think, you know. Um, but they might strike them as interesting. But it might strike them as interesting. Yeah. That's it. Uh, you know, I was talking to Stephanie before, uh, she mentioned uh, something uh, that... Uh, actually, we're probably let's move on to the next because we're we're already starting to talk about what is it can I do? Can I really prepare yeah. for my audition? Well, yeah. the answer is absolutely yes. Yeah. And it's more than just knowing what to expect. We went we've pretty much at this point kind of went over a lot of what to expect, but what can you actually do? Mm-hmm. Stephanie, I know you have a lot of ideas about this. I do, I do. Um, I think this. I think the stories are important. I think that's their insight into what kind of personality you have. And even though the interview portion is probably some people just dread it. You know, viewers. I mean, are like, oh god. Um, so you know, what do you have to give them that shows that you have that you're at least an interesting person? And you may think I got nothing. I'm not an interesting person. I haven't done anything. And um, I, I sort of the reverse problem. I had too many stories that I knew I could not tell on family television. So I went to Facebook and I said, all right, friends, you've made some of these memories with me. You know, you, you know a lot of my stories. Remind me, like, what, can, what should I tell them? And I got great suggestions that I had completely forgotten about were even things that I had done. So I used like three of those on my audition sheet. And I got asked about, well, the very first one was the first story I had to tell on the air, which was sort of mortifying that they picked that one. But um, so, yeah, I, I, I mean, crowdsource it. Ask your friends, ask your family who know you, what do you think is an interesting thing about me? Or, or remind me of the things I've done again. And, and you might be amazed at what kinds of things you can come up with. So I would say that's the, one of the best ways probably to prepare for the interview portion is to just put a lot, as much material as you can. And they will give you, I'm not kidding, like a 10-page questionnaire. So they know they have to prompt some things. But um, give them some information that they can work with and that you're prepared to follow up on. If they ask you, so I, so you met your wife while you were canoeing and kayaking backwards, the answer that you have is not yes. Done. Yes. Right. Yes. And I'll tell you why that was so exciting and fun, because that's what happens on the show. Alex gives you a statement and they tell you, you've got to run with it. You've just got to start talking. And the same thing is true of your audition. They may ask you what seems like a yes or no question. Do not give them a yes or no answer. Give them more. Tell them a story. And if that's not your strong suit, then we can talk privately about how to make it more of your strong suit than it has been previously. Good. Good. Um, Yeah, everybody has these stories, and I think that was a great idea. I've had that happen uh, to me uh, with friends who were going for auditions, and they ran things past me. Mm -hmm. And they said, what do you think? Because I had been on the show at that point. I kind of had an idea about what it it was like. Mm -hmm. So definitely, uh, talk to your friends, talk to family. Great idea. And you know what? If you're still striking out in that regard, well, you know what? Start doing something interesting. Right, right. You have to start. start. Start right now. You have six weeks before from you get the call, you know, so go do something interesting. Yeah. Um, I would also say um, one of the ways to prepare is to is to take some time to think about how you're going to look because you want to be comfortable, right? So you don't want to wear – it's just like an interview. It really is like a job interview. You don't want the job interview to be the first time you wear that suit and everybody can tell because you're horribly uncomfortable in it and you didn't really know how to tie the tie and you don't really like suits anyway. You know, wear what makes you feel like a million bucks. 
And if you don't know what that is, again, ask a friend because they've seen you wear something they like. Or if they haven't, they have opinions on what you would look good in that you should be wearing. And they'll take you on a trip and you can do a little shopping. Um, wear something that you've gotten compliments on that is sort of your confidence outfit. And most people sort of have one, at least women I know do, you know, an outfit that you think, every time I wear this, good things happen to me. So, you know, and even if that's just a pair of shoes, maybe those are the only part of the outfit that's appropriate for this, wear something that makes you feel good about yourself because then you're not worrying about your appearance. You're, you can focus on yourself. But you, you know that you look good, so you know that part is going to present well. Right, right. And uh, so, well, so let's uh, say, so what else? What else can you do? What else? What else should you be working on before you get to that audition? I would say, again, since it's about gameplay, demeanor, and appearance, that you need to figure out what of those you think that you might be having problems with. If you're not already playing along at home and calling out categories and dollar amounts and saying out loud the answer in the form of a question. Start doing that. Start practicing. Playing the game. Put a pen in your hand for the clicker. Like, do all of that. If you have to stand up to be at the podium, do all of those things. If you haven't read Bob Harris's book, Prisoner of Turbekistan, he outlines all of that stuff. And it's really good advice because you start to feel comfortable with the format. And it's going to look like second nature. And it's going to look like you were born to be there. And that's what they want. So gameplay. And then demeanor. Again, have fun. Maggie will tell you this explicitly when you get there like you know it's a game show have fun well you better know what that looks like and be prepared to have fun and and at that point you get nothing to lose really i mean you may feel like yes i have everything to lose i'm not going to get on the show but if you if you approach it as you know what i'm going to have fun in this moment right here right now then even if you don't get on the show you had fun at the audition and if you're having fun i'm guessing that maggie will take notice of you and even if you don't get on this round, that sort of gets filed away. And she's got deep, deep files. Like, she remembers everything. Uh, and then, again, appearance. Like, you know, you can tell the people who haven't thought about it much or maybe are too uncomfortable in what they're, you know, in sort of how they're presenting themselves and what they're wearing. Like, you just have to feel comfortable in your own skin. Uh, and if you're not, I mean, look, look at the champion, Julie, who's on right now. She's a self-admitted introvert, shy. And yet they showed a little bit of her audition clip that's just been released. Um, uh, Jeopardy just released it where she's already on the buzzer. And she's having fun. And it's obvious. So, you know, what fun looks like to different people is different. But um, you've got to figure out how you're going to convey that I want to be on the show and I want people to know that I'm having a good time doing it. And, and that, you know, that will rub off and that will be noticeable. So if, right. So, and if you've never looked at yourself – while you're doing these things, like if you haven't talked in a mirror, like answered questions looking at what your face looks like, it might be time to do that. Yep, exactly. You you had uh, suggested something else from a woman's perspective yes. to me the other day yes. of what to do prior to your audition. Yeah, I'm, I'm a makeup girl. Um, I know that I feel best when I have a made-up face. And um, I went to Sephora, which is a makeup store, uh, and they will give you makeup consults. They'll, they'll make up your face for you. All you have to do is schedule an appointment and say, I've got this event and this is what I'm doing it for. And they were so excited. They were like, you're trying out for a TV show? Like, my makeup could be on TV. I didn't tell them that that wasn't going to happen. But So they, they, you know, they made me up, and I felt like a million bucks. And I didn't have to do it myself. I didn't have to worry about it. I scheduled it the day you know, of the thing I was going to. And it gave me a way to talk about what I was doing to this other person, start telling my stories to the makeup artist, and... I just I thought, okay, it, it was it's like pampering yourself, right? So if if you need to get a pedicure, then you know the day before because it'll relax you. If you need to get a massage, the day before because it will relax you. For God's sake, do it. It will help. And and if, and even if you're doing it on the show, you will have gotten a massage. That's always good. Cool. Yeah, uh, I think I could summarize in just a few words what we've basically been saying about this is don't wing it. Right. It will show. It will yeah. absolutely show. Even if you've had experience with winging interviews or doing things, just don't. You know, this is this may be a one shot that you have. We're talking about so many things that you can do to prepare yeah. for this. Uh, you know, and and the knowledge part is second. Not secondary. It's kind of immaterial at this point right. because if you already got to the point where they've called you because you did well enough on the sh on the test and you were lucky enough to be. Um, you know, called for that audition. 
uh, you know what Oprah says about luck. It's, I'll try, try to remember this. It's real quick. Uh, she says that luck is just being there to take advantage of opportunities. Yeah. You make your own luck. Yeah. And it's, and it's kind of true. There is a degree of luck to it, that mm -hmm. there is a randomness of being called. But the fact is, uh, if you're there, if you show up, you know, it's, if you show up and do the things you should be doing or can be doing, mm -hmm. you really are improving your odds. Yep. Of, and, of getting on that show, and that's yeah. what it's about. So don't. I, 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 I tried to wing it twice. I admit that, <laughs> and I didn't get on the show twice. But then yeah. when I finally realized, you know what? I really shouldn't be winging this. I really should figure out what I need to do. So I put some time and effort, a lot of time and effort, into thinking about what I should be doing. Yeah. And, and I got on the show. And for those of you who may have already done this once or more than once, um, I would say I would say make that part of your narrative. That's okay. Show them that you're ready to do it again. You're still having fun. And that kind of persistence, Maggie loves that. She loves to have these stories to tell the future people like Mark May tried 15 times before he got on. Like she would love that. Just don't be bitter. Don't, don't be entitled. Right? I, this is my fifth. Just, you know, it's one more chance. Aren't I lucky? Um, that is the kind of attitude that's probably going to go a lot farther than it's my fifth audition. Can you believe this crap? I mean, you just, that may be how you feel. Tamp it down. I'm happy to be here. It's exciting. Great. Exactly right. Okay, I think we've uh, covered that quite a bit. You know, there's, we could talk about this all day. Seppi and I have talked about this all day, but you know what? I, I think we got a really good idea across. I, hopefully, we got the ideas across about, you know, how you want to approach the audition. So, what happens then? What happens after my audition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wait. you wait, and they, and they tell you that, right? They tell you, don't call us, we'll call you, and you may not know. The only way you know if you didn't get in is if we didn't call you after 18 months. It's just that bad, yeah. So that's the only way to know. Other than tuning into J Board and sort of hearing about people at your audition city who may or may not have gotten the call. So my, you know, I, I would tell people, and I think Mark asked this question, um, I'd put it in your rearview mirror once it's done. Just put it in your rearview mirror. And, you know, don't try to go live in Trebekistan and be overly preparing and overly preparing. I think it just puts you in a bad headspace. I had to, I've lived in that headspace for the last two years, and it was just way too stressful. I just couldn't do it. I mean, I did do it, but it was really hard. And it was such a joy when I lost because I could just stop worrying about the show so I would tell you just pretend you know it's done it's, it's in the past and and maybe it'll now be part of your future but don't dwell on it to the extent that you can mm -hmm. not easy easier said than done right exactly right uh, and the call this is actually is a call it's not an email <laughs> you will actually get a phone call yeah. that says uh, you hear somebody that says uh, this is Robert from Jeopardy that is very good news yes it is I got that phone call Actually, I got a call from Robert. Uh, I got another call from Glenn another time because I didn't mention this, but I was an alternate. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a whole other story. So I actually got called to the studio twice before I got on the show. Uh, that's, that's a really good call to get. And, you know, as somebody said, it's 18 months. You really don't know when it's going to come in. And people ask all the time. I haven't heard. It's four months. It's five months. Does that mean that I'm not going to hear? The answer is no. You yeah. might. There are plenty okay. of stories of people that have gotten on, have actually gotten that phone call. 18 yep. months. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, just uh, hang in there. Hang in there. And you, yeah. might think, you will think it's a practical joke. I know I did when they finally did call, but it, you, you'll know. Because they'll call you more than once. It's not like if you miss that phone call, you're sunk. They will call you more than once. If they don't, they'll leave a voicemail. So, um, so, don't, so don't worry about having to sit by your phone like some girl from the 1950s, you know, waiting for her, waiting for her date to call. Um, let, live your life until you, until you get the call. Mm -hmm. And we'll keep right. our fingers crossed for you. Yep. Oh, I move the slides here. Okay. Uh, okay. So you know what? I think we covered an awful lot, uh, and we have some questions that were submitted in advance, so we're able to prepare for these. We answered actually a lot of the questions, but let's sure. let's go through them. Sure. And I am going to pull up a another slide deck here that says questions, and there we are. So let me just read a quick, and then Stephanie, you can jump in. Sure. This is from Matthew in Vancouver. At my last audition, Maggie specifically said she really liked my answer to what would you do with the money, but I didn't get the call. If I get another audition, should I use the same answer, which was distinctive enough that she would remember, and I will add to this, she will definitely remember mm -hmm. knowing Maggie, or come up with something else? What would you say? 
I would actually make a reference to it. I'd say, well, last time I was here, I said I'd do this. And in, in, and if you still think it's a good idea, it'd be like, after much considered thought, that's still what I want to do. Or after much considered thought, I'm going to do that, or I'm going to blow it all in Vegas. You know, I, I would I would make it sort of a joke that this is what I said I'm going to do. I'm a man of my word. I'm still going to do that. You know, that kind of thing. So I, I would not be af- afraid to reference it. I agree, 100%. Right. You, you, yeah, they will remember. Yep. And uh, and even if they don't, you know what? The fact is, if you thought it was a good enough answer the first time, it's probably a good enough answer the next time as well, even if it's several times. Uh, it, if, it's, if, it's, if it's you, if it really right. is you, and you right. believe it, okay. it'll show. And that you know, it may not be the answer that you didn't get the call. It may have nothing to do with the money oh, yeah. question. Exactly. So anyway, okay, let's go on. This is from uh, David in Winnipeg, Manitoba, mm-hmm. Canada, yeah. who is a frequent participant on the J board, I will add. Yep. As a 42-year-old white male, factors that I can't control, meaning demographics are against me. Any way to counter that? You've mentioned on J board that the audition is like a specialized job interview. There are questions in job interviews I always have problems with. For example, tell me your weakness is always a big one. Are there actually any questions like what you'd hear at a job interview there? How do you recommend answering them? No. No, they're not going to be like, tell me about a time in your game show past, David, where you struggled with getting an answer right. They're not They're not asking any of those kind of life hurdle questions. They really are asking you questions about you and your life. Tell us a story. Tell us about you. Tell us why you're interesting so that we want to put you on our show and people won't turn the channel to something else when you're being interviewed. So I don't think they're going to try any trip up questions like that. And I know he's concerned about the demographic thing, and I don't think it's an unlegitimate concern, illegitimate concern, Um, but we also know that a heck of a lot of 42-year-old white guys end up on the show. If you're good enough and you convince them they can't do this season without you, you're going to get on. That's your job. They have to do it with you. Figure out how you're going to sell them on that concept. I agree. Again, I agree 100%. Okay, so David is a 42-year-old white male. I will add that I was a 53-year-old white male when I got called for the show. Mm-hmm. And, and you just watch the show. You see that there are right. older people or younger people. They pick demographics all over the map, yep. younger people, older people, uh, white, black, male, female. Uh, they're all over. Yeah, I was so, a 42-year-old white lady. Yep. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. Yeah, Very not good. Kidding. Uh yeah, you're right. You can't control your demographic. No, you're who you are. You you are who you are, and that's it. The thing it comes back to is be the best that you are. Yeah, that's right. Be yourself and be the best yourself. Yep. And don't worry about the things that you cannot control. Right. Okay, let's go on. This is from Nancy in Washington. Yep. I've auditioned twice before in two thousand and six and two thousand and ten. Any advice for the always a bridesmaid, never a bride? Um, keep catching those bouquets, right? Keep going for it. Um, I think, again, Maggie loves these sort of underdog stories. She tells them and uses different people. It's not like there's only one person she uses for these stories. I think she likes persistence. I think they like to see people who love the show that much that they want to keep trying. It just is such a good story for them that people are so dedicated to the show that they'll work year after year after year to get on. And so I don't think there is any shame in, I've done this before, I'm doing it again, I'm going to do it again. Um, and, and, you know, maybe make a little joke about, you know, I, last time I caught the bouquet, so I'm ready to get married to you, Jeopardy. I mean, nothing wrong with actually owning up to this is who I am, this is my story, and I'm going to keep coming back until you just have me on the damn show. <laughs> You have two choices. You put me on the show or you stop inviting me. (laughs) Yep. There's another question coming up that's uh, right on that subject, but I'm not sure which one it is. So actually, let's kind of jump ahead to the one that I think, uh, no. Okay. So which one are we looking at here? Is Nancy. Okay, so we're going to go on to four. Okay. Uh, I've been in the contestant pool five previous times. This is from Harvey in New York City. Sometimes the prior auditions I've been asked how many times I've tried out. Well, we just addressed this. What's the best way to respond to this question if it comes up? Yeah. Stephanie answered that. And right, be, honest. be honest. Turn it into a positive. Be honest. Yep. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, it can be a joke. Like, here's number 12. Like, I'm keeping track. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're not damaged goods. Not at all. They will no. Not look at you as this is this goods. is an underdog story now, right? So make it that. Like I am a scrapper. I'm a fighter. And again, Maggie likes those kind of people. So that I think if you are not bowed and bent by the experience, 
then the, she she wants to see that. That's great. Great. Okay. Okay. This is from Doug in St. Louis, Missouri. It appears that Sports Jeopardy, ah, we're changing the subject a little. Auditions yeah, yeah. are coming up quickly, so I would like to ask if you thought one should audition differently for Sports Jeopardy than one would for Jeopardy. Example, be a little bit more enthusiastic, have more sporty stories, etc. I guess what, without personal experience, it is hard to know, but if you had to hazard a guess, what do you think? I would think, again, they're looking for people who are going to play the show well. And so I think that's one of the things you might want to show is why do you want to be on sports Jeopardy as opposed to regular Jeopardy? If it's just because that's really where your passion lies, you love sports. That's where your knowledge base lies. I know a lot about sports. Then I think there should be something in your story that talks about, yes, that's why I, I want to be on this show because I love sports and I've been learning about, I've been collecting baseball cards since I was three. I mean, I think that kind of thing is what probably what they're looking for. They don't want duds. They don't want people who are like, I just wanted to be on Jeopardy of any kind, but I don't really know anything about sports, and so I'm going to triple stump all of these questions. I don't think they want that. So, yeah, I think I would give them a little bit of something that shows that you're prepared to play, to play that game and play it well. Very good. Okay, let's go on. We've got a couple more. Do my chances of getting an audition, this is from Josh in Indianapolis, do my chances of getting an audition depend on which potential audition site I select? That's a really good question. When registering for the online test. If so, and if I am willing to travel to improve my chances of an audition, what strategy would you recommend? This is one of those where there's a lot of speculation, and I think the speculation might even be correct in terms of there might be markets that are untapped that they're looking into, but unfortunately... I can't tell you which ones those are. Like, I wouldn't say, oh, Josh, roll the dice and for sure go to Buffalo, assuming they do it there. I do think the heavily populated coastal ones are harder. There's just, like, D.C., Boston, New York, L.A., they get tons of people. And I I just sort of get the sense, could be wrong, get the sense that those are a little bit more competitive. And if you are willing to go, and you're already in middle America, um, I think they're making a greater push for flyover states. So I don't think you'd have to travel too far from home to have a really good shot. Yeah. But I think this is a fascinating question. I think there's probably something to it. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I I would agree. I mean, I agree to the point of, yeah, there's probably something to it, but we really don't know because they don't say. Oh, and I'd hate to tell you, you know, go to Virginia only to have that not work at all. <laughs> yeah, yep. So, uh, okay, one more. This is from Tim in Boston. Hmm. How would you say your on-air persona compares to how you are in real life, and do you feel this may have had any effect on your selection as contestants? Well, <laughs> I know for me the case is uh, yes. I, w- I am exactly as I came across on TV, uh, and I am pretty sure that is, in fact, why I got on the show, that um, Maggie recognized a sister from another mister, and um, we just connected because we were both loud, obnoxious, <laughs> Um, ladies, and they don't get a lot of that necessarily in the audition room. So, um, so yeah, I think it did have an effect. I think I think extroverts are probably at a slight advantage here. They don't get a lot, and so they stand out. Um, but that being said, I don't think you can craft or should try to craft, you know, an on-air persona. I think it doesn't hurt if you feel like you don't have a lot of confidence to think of yourself already as like Tim, Jeopardy contestant, and sort of project what Tim Jeopardy contestant would be like if he were on the show. But I don't think it, you know, Tim Jeopardy contestant is going to, can be a a totally separate persona from you unless you're, you know, a pretty experienced actor. That's really hard and it's probably not going to come off very well. But yeah, I think, you know, I think it never hurts for them. I think they're looking for people who are going to play well on television. And that's a variety of people, but I think energetic people help. Right. Okay. I can't add anything to that. Um, just to say that, yeah, uh, you know, I was who I was, yes, you know, uh, but I, I like I like that idea about kind of projecting yourself, kind of picturing yourself That's right. in that situation. And I think you will think a little bit different about yourself if mm-hmm. you do. Okay. And it really will bring out who you are, who you could be, as opposed to being someone else or trying to be someone else. Mm-hmm. That's not going to work. Yeah, right. So, okay. So, um you know what? We're we're running a little late, but that's fine. Uh, uh, let's uh, go back. We're going to wrap up a little bit. So I'm going to go back to. Uh, just give me a second here. Let's go on to this guy. Nice. Takeaways. Yep. 
you know, you could fill this in uh, as you desire. Uh, oh, let me. I guess I didn't mention this earlier. I'm sorry. I should have mentioned this, but it was it was noted uh, in the uh, in the emails that went out that, and you maybe saw it on the screen that there is a handout that goes with the webinar. But I assume you've been taking notes anyway. But uh, so go to the. Uh, the, the the webinar screen and you'll see that link. Anyway, uh, you know this is the first and the last thing to do is answer is take action, do something, and hopefully you got a bunch of takeaways from this webinar, and just start today. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I think you had a couple of other um, good uh, slides about. Yep. Yeah. Let's I, go on. Yep. What I'm good at, but could be great at. This is something that I keep hearing from my business mentors is to just keep working on this and say, you know what, good isn't necessarily good enough. In fact, it's probably not good enough. If you're good at something, but you think you could be great at it, work on it. Yeah, I would That's challenge cheap. you to yeah challenge you to think about the various aspects of what the audition requires, whether it's gameplay, demeanor, personality, appearance, and think, you know, what am I nervous about? What do I feel good about? You know, what do I think is a strong suit? And then is there any way that I can actually improve it? And then I think the next slide deals with what 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 am I weaker at and how can I at least get that to a place where it's going to work? I'm going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not so good, what could I be good at? Mm -hmm. And start there. Yeah. Start there. And then once you finish that, my suggestion is then see previous page. Because once you're good at something, maybe you could be great at it. You know, we've we've dropped a lot of uh, ideas for you, a lot of things to keep in mind, and uh, and uh, you know, and hopefully you get to the audition. I know we have people on the line who uh, have an audition coming up, or hope to get an audition coming up, or some people who have actually been on the show tell me that they were going to be sitting in on this, so they're not going to be auditioning anymore. But they just, you know, they're interested in the process, and there's a whole lot of other people who are just interested in what's going on behind the scenes. It's a, you know, it's a great process. It's a fascinating process, and it's a process, you know, and processes can be analyzed. The processes can be improved upon, and that's kind of where we're going here. So, do um, you have any final thoughts, Stephanie? Um, again, I think if you approach it as, um, I'm going to have fun. The first thing, my first goal is actually that I'm going to have fun. Then, no matter what happens, it will have been a success for you. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that if you focus on the I'm going to have fun part, You'll feel more relaxed because you're just there to have fun after all. Uh, and I think, you know, you'll be loose enough and you'll come across in a way that will probably be very good for you. Um, and so if you're feeling nervous, if you're really tense about it, just, okay, I'm just, you know, my number one goal is to go and have fun. Have a good time. And you will have fun if you let yourself have fun. You might even have fun if you don't let yourself have fun. Um, but if you sort of focus on that, I think it'll keep you um, focus on the right things, and it'll keep you loose, and then you'll end up having a good time if nothing else. Right, exactly. Okay, uh, let me just uh, let's just finish up with uh, how do we uh, contact you, Stephanie? If anybody's interested in getting to you directly, sure. Uh, I am on the J board. So you can private message me there as Dr. J, certainly. Uh, and I have an email. So if you want to email me, my email address is uh, my whole name as, as one word. So S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E-J-A-S-S, -S, all one word, at gmail.com. And I'd be happy to talk to any of you. Good. And my contact information uh, is randy at getonjeopardy.com. Uh, I've already heard from some of you. Uh, uh, that's the reply to address on the invitation that you got to uh, when you signed up for the uh, for the webinar. So I can be reached there. And I am also on JBoard. Uh, my name there is Randy G. One word. And uh, I'll just I'll just throw this one in because uh, my email is uh, uses Randy at getonjeopardy.com. I do have a website. It's a pretty rudimentary website called getonjeopardy.com. And I am actually working on a couple of books about the Jeopardy process, how to get on the show, 
books on just tips about things that go on in the show that uh, you think you'd find interesting. And there's more information at the website. And uh, there's more information if you contact me directly. So anything you want to add, Stephanie, about uh, things that uh, other things you may want to add? No, I mean, no. Nope. <laughs> okay. I'll be tempted to say more if I do, and then I'll just keep going. So, no, I'm good. Okay, so we finally found a way to limit Stephanie's speech. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, so I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, this webinar will be available for replay uh, immediately afterwards. Uh, so just follow the same link that you use to uh, attend the webinar live. And this uh, replay will be available on an indefinite basis. And we are available on an indefinite basis. And we hope to hear from you. Mm -hmm. And I uh, want to thank you again for being here. Yeah, thanks. It was great. So, okay. Thank you, folks. Bye. Bye.